Trigonometry has many applications, including circular motion. In this video, we explore relationships between circle geometry and trig ratios. And we'll use trig ratios to solve problems involving circles and circular motion. Given any point on the circumference of a circle, we can relate its coordinates to the angle between the radius and the x-axis. Drawing a right-angled triangle, we can relate these values by writing trig ratios. For example, the sine of theta equals the opposite, the y-coordinate, divided by the hypotenuse, the radius r. Given any triangle in a semicircle, we know the angle inscribed is always a right angle. And because of this, we can write trig ratios for one of the acute angles, in this case, theta. Here, the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent, AC, over the hypotenuse, AB. And, given any isosceles triangle formed by two radii and a chord, we can draw the perpendicular bisector of the triangle's base to split the triangle into two right-angled triangles. And once again, we can write trig ratios, like the tangent of this angle theta equal to the opposite OX over the adjacent AX. So, let's solve trig problems involving circles and circular motion. The London Eye is a city observation wheel with passenger capsules. These capsules track in a circular path with a diameter of 134 metres. A passenger enters a capsule at A and moves slowly around this path as the wheel rotates. After a 150 degree rotation of the wheel, the capsule is in the position shown. How can we calculate the height of the passenger at this point? Given the diameter of 134 meters, we know the radius is 67 meters. We can draw this horizontal line and this vertical line to form a right-angled triangle, which splits the 150 degrees into 90 degrees and this 60-degree angle. And if we calculate this side x using a trig ratio, we only need to add 67 meters to find the height. The sides involved in this problem are the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So we use the sine ratio. Substituting the values gives sine 60 equals x divided by 67. Multiplying both sides by 67 to get x on its own, and entering this into a calculator, gives x equals 58 meters. And when we add the 67 meters, we get a capsule height of 125 meters. Center pivot irrigation is a method of crop irrigation that results in large circular crops. The irrigation arm is fixed at the center and slowly rotates about the pivot. In this problem, the irrigation arm has a length of 275 meters. And it makes one complete rotation every 12 hours. After four hours, the end of the arm has moved from point X to point Y. How can we calculate the distance of point Y from the starting point X? First, we isolate this isosceles triangle made by the two radii and the length xy. We can calculate this angle by considering what fraction of a complete rotation has been made. If a complete rotation takes 12 hours, then 4 hours represents 4 twelfths, or 1 third, of 360 degrees, which equals 120 degrees. And by the symmetry of an isosceles triangle, if we split this angle in half, we'll bisect the distance xy at the midpoint m, forming two right-angled triangles. With this right-angled triangle, we can use a trig ratio to calculate the length mx. We're interested in the opposite and the hypotenuse. So we substitute into the sine ratio, 
rearrange and use a calculator to give mx equals 238 meters. And since m is the midpoint, the length xy is 2 times 238, or 476 meters, giving us the required distance between x and y.